Hey guys, we are back uh, with another episode of Why the Pros Play. This one's going to be a little different. Um, it's not going to be 100% about just the hero. Uh, it's also going to be a, a little bit about the build because I believe in the past I have done a, a video kind of like this. It might have been a high level hero plays. I don't remember. Um, for spin build Sonya. Um, and I've talked about auto attack Sonya before, but uh, we've been seeing the pros use W build more often. So Sonya's been out for a long time, so I'm not going to go over too much about what she does. Her spear is a stun, it gives you fury, does a good amount of damage, and it moves you towards the target. Your W's, what this build's going to be about, I'll talk about a little bit more as this video goes on. Uh, and your E is the spin build, or the, this, sorry, just the spin ability. Uh, you're going to be activating this ability, you'll be spinning, and you'll be healing for 25% of the damage dealt. And you'll hit everything around you. It's a great way to keep yourself topped back off. So, now that we know what her abilities do, her W, Seismic Slam, it deals a good amount of damage to the first target you're going to hit. In fact, um, it does about three times... Um, uh, between two and three times what your basic attack deals. So, for example, Sonya's basic attack does 87 damage, and her W does 183 damage. So, what happened where this, this whole build used to be kind of a meme, and now this build is kind of a meta build that's being used almost every time that Sonya's being played in the highest levels of competitive. Well, the first thing that happened is there were a couple buffs, not just to W itself, but to a lot of the talents that also affect your Seismic Slam. But that's only a portion of why this build started gaining a lot of popularity. And the other portion is that the meta is shifting to be a lot beefier. We've been noticing this, I've been mentioning this in, in several videos, but uh, the meta is getting beefier and beefier. Um, bruisers do about as much damage as assassins, so there's not really any need to have an assassin if you can have someone with a much bigger health bar. Tanks are getting tankier, especially against bruisers, um, making it to where there's not really a lot of reasons to drop a tank. Um, and um, because most people are putting all of their damage on these high health targets, there's not a lot of reason to, to jump in the backline and try to kill someone else because... The backline is either really, really far away, or the backline is just as tanky as everyone else, and they're just up in the front line with everyone else. And so because of this meta shift, people have been going back to um, the front-to-back compositions. And what a front-to-back composition is, basically, is a composition where you're going to kill the front line first and then slowly move to the back line. And you're going to build your team comp to be able to outlast the enemy's team comp. In this particular game, Wild Heart is against crowd control, and Wild Heart went with double support, a very long-ranged mage, and a really strong front line. And that's basically what they're going to be doing, is just playing front to back and slowly whittling down the enemies to the point that Deckard Cain can no longer keep up with the amount of damage that they're bringing out, and Deckard Cain's very strong engages will not work against their team because they are just going to be too tanky, or in the case of Chromie, just too far away. So, what we can see immediately is that Zergling on this Sonya is playing aggressive and kind of bullying everyone that he wants to bully. Um... Of course, he's not going to go into, like, very outnumbered positions, but in one-on-one -on -one situations, he is absolutely bullying people. So let's talk about the pieces of this build that are allowing him to do what he's doing. So, at level 1, he takes Furious Blows. Every fourth cast of Seismic Slam deals 50% more damage to the primary target and costs no Fury. So you saw it just crit for about 350 there, um, as opposed to the normal 220 that it normally is. Um, and it allows him to cast it for free, making it to where he can get a lot more damage off much more often. He's going to turn in the first 17 gems that his team has, and he's going to continue pushing. Level 4. He takes Shattered Ground, increase the length of Seismic Slam's uh, splash by 66%, and increase its splash damage by 125% of its base damage. So before... Your Seismic Slam used to do a huge amount of the damage to just the first target. 232 damage to the first target. And 58 damage to the targets behind that target. Let me turn down this game just a tad. Um, 
And so it was only about a fourth of the damage that you would do to all the targets behind, which is rather weak. When you take Shattered Ground, it now increases the splash damage by more than the base damage. And it also increases the length of the splash by 66%. Um, now you hear the, the memes of the sound where it goes boom, 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 boom. You know, it, it's just, it's such a funny sound. But in a front-to-back comp, this is kind of the perfect talent to exist. You're going to be doing a good amount of damage to their front line, and you're going to be doing significantly more damage to everyone in their back line as it goes back. And it's going to hit a huge amount of their back line as well, making it an extraordinarily powerful ability um, for this particular meta, where people are running these front-to-back team comps. And now at level 7, this is a very debated tier. There are a lot of different competitive players taking different talents on this tier, and they all will argue to the ends of Earth on what you want to be taking. He takes Battle Rage. Um, I'm not 100% sure why he went with this talent, because there's not a lot of mercenaries on this map, and it doesn't help you kill the web weavers. It doesn't help you kill any structures. Most people go with Poison Spear for just a little bit more single target damage. When you really need to kill a target, you can use your spear. So your spear is a good amount of damage. It's basically one seismic slam, and with poison spear, it's two seismic slams on a single target, and it's very fast damage. Um, but battle rage also is a pretty decent heal, and that's one thing that this build kind of lacks compared to the other builds. Auto attack build will increase your auto attack damage, and you'll heal based off of your auto attacks. E build uh, or your spin build will lower the cooldown of your spin and increase the healing from your spin. Seeing as this has neither of those two things, the one thing that you do happen to lack in this build is self-healing. So I do think that's probably the reason why he went with Battle Rage, is because the other ones, the extra damage, he won't really need. Um, and so he doesn't end up going in that direction. He takes Wrath of the Berserker, but we have been seeing Leap a little bit more in the competitive environment. Um, but honestly... Wrath of the Berserker is so strong, especially when team fights are going to go long, because you get to keep your ult for as long as you have rage, and you're going to get rage every time you take damage, deal damage with basic attacks, or use your spear, um, or fury, right? Fury, not rage. Um, so you can keep Wrath of the Berserker going for as long as the fights go, and their team comp is meant to make these fights go long. So, now that we've seen a little bit about the build so far, let me talk about the playstyle in case you guys wanted to kind of emulate this a little bit. The early game playstyle is all about abusing people with the free casts of your W, as well as the extra damage when you end up getting it. A level 4 doesn't really help in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but it's great for those early objective fights where everyone's fighting on a point, uh, or everyone's fighting over a channeled area, or anything like that. Your Ws get a ton of value. One thing that you need to be watching out for in the early portions of the game is you don't have a lot of self-sustain. So you need to make sure that you're spinning on waves, which is something that Zergling has done really well. And you need to make sure that you're spinning when the enemies can't interrupt and when the enemies can't really deal more damage than what you can heal. Gaining your life back with spins and bullying people with Ws is basically all you want to be doing in the early game. This is more of a team fight build rather than a single target or one-on-one -on -one build. Uh, like you'll see with some of the spin or auto attack builds. When you start reaching the mid game, you want to join fights and you want to take them slow in this build. You want to be an extra frontliner to give your backline time to reposition, to get more abilities off, and you want to make sure that your Ws are hitting the most amount of targets as possible. The basic way to do that is just position in a safe way and you'll likely be hitting a lot of targets because both teams are playing front to back. When you start reaching the late game is when you're going to start really abusing some of your later talents. Uh, one in particular is Giant Slammer. Basic attacks and Seismic Slam will now deal an additional 1.5% of heroes maximum health as damage and heal Sonya. And at this point you can play a lot more aggressive and get a little bit further away from your healers. Um, because this will heal Sonya for, this isn't just the basic Seismic Slam that's going to hit the first target. This is everyone that it hits. And this is what makes this build so good against the meta right now with everyone running so many bruisers. Is Not only are you going to be doing percent health damage to all the enemy tanks and bruisers, but you're also going to be doing or, or healing for that amount as well. So as you can see, the enemy team ran a tank and double bruiser, um, as Zarya is considered a support, but for all intents and purposes, she is a bruiser. And now you're going to be healing percent health off of all of their health whenever you hit them with W or basic attacks. And no escape 
at level 13 just allows you to really get in those fights and reposition more and more. And this is where this build really comes online. Level 16 makes this build kind of an unstoppable force as you're going to be doing 40% more damage. You're going to be doing percent health damage, you're going to be hitting everyone with your W's, you're going to be healing yourself with your activatable battle rage, you're going to be healing yourself with your W's, you're going to be um, just pretty much overwhelming uh, with that satisfying sound of boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it is such a fun sound. Um, I, I can turn it back up while we're... Hold on, let me turn this back up. You guys got to hear this. Like, All right. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let me see. Let's 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 turn this all the way back up. Let's go go sound. Hopefully that's not too loud. We're gonna listen to this for just a minute. I don't usually play with much sound on, but when you're playing Sony, you've got to. It's such a satisfying sound. It's, it's so... Especially when they're just sitting on, like, a turret. Like, your web weavers are pushing, and you're just sitting on a turret, just, just W, 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 W. And it's just... And it's so funny, because there are positions, before both the turrets are destroyed, you can actually position here and have your W, once you have the level 4 talent, you can have your W go and hit this, and it'll actually go all the way up. It'll hit this, 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 and, and sometimes it hits that, depending on the map and the angle that you're at. But you can actually hit, you can actually hit like all of this if you can angle it correctly. Uh, it's a little tricky to get the angle right. Or you can stand here and you can hit the, the fountain at the same time as this, so that when you destroy this, the wall will die, and then it's easy to walk over and kill the fountain. Um, that level 4 talent makes you incredibly strong for sieging. So I'm going to turn back down the uh, the volume really quick on both, both sides, but you guys get the point. And, you know, that's actually something that's kind of interesting as well. Um, I'll keep it short, but there was actually this thing done uh, a long time ago, and I can't remember if it was in World of Warcraft or League of Legends, um, but they found that people were picking specific characters over other characters. I don't remember if it was a class or a character, but... Um, and they, they said that they believe the reason for it was that one had more satisfying sounds and their abilities, sounds and animations, and it made it feel like their abilities like landed better, even though effectively they were very similar when they when they were looking at both of the, the characters and everything. Um, and there is a bit of a psychology to it, um, a bit of a science to it anyways. There's a particular corporation that uh, they get hired by companies, specifically like retail and businesses that you walk into, and their goal is to create an environment that has a different feeling. Um, and there's a few different companies that do it, but the one that's really popular and has a lot of research out is called Mood Music, or Mood Media now, I think is what they're called. Um, if you ever want to look that up, if you ever gone into a store and like, y y it has like that, that unique feeling like you go into the store and you're like oh man i love this store um there are a group of psychologists that kind of try to create that feeling out of stores if you ever go into like a store for the first time and you get that like a really cool feeling you're like man this is a cool place uh it's probably a mix of like uh visual and audio like indicators that that these scientists have created to make you want to like a store more um, it's just something as simple as like upbeat music can change uh, the feeling of some place compared to more sad music. Um, and it'll change the feeling that you have when you enter those stores. So, uh, not sponsored by like mood media or anything. I don't think any of you guys really own a retail store. And for the ones that do, um, it, I mean, you can definitely try it out. It's not expensive, but uh, yeah, I'm not sponsored. Um, but it's just something interesting that, that the sounds that characters make, um, do actually significantly change how we recognize those characters. Sonya, her basic attack seems very big and it seems very impactful, but it's actually a lot less damage than some others. Um, ETC's basic attack seems very weak, like just the sound it makes, but it actually does quite a bit of damage. So it's kind of surprising to, to see which characters have like stronger abilities, but we don't really remember them as much because of their sounds but that being said that's all irrelevant um let's get back into this we've talked about the late game and the goals of the late game basically you want to be this juggernaut but he's playing a lot safer because he has these 41 gems he does not want to lose so he can play a lot more aggressive 
and be that juggernaut, but unfortunately he doesn't want to risk such a big thing. Um, and we'll get to see him play a little bit more aggressive as this game goes on, uh, but that's just the reasoning why he's playing a tad safer right now. Once he gets his turn in, uh, we should start seeing him play a lot more aggressive, and we'll see that Juggernaut playstyle, that extra 20% movement speed every time that he lands a W, the healing, the extra damage, the free casts of it. He, he will be very scary. Also, Zergling, he's a competitive player. Um, I'm saying this right as he misses like a Q, and he's missed a Q before. He's got to work on those Qs. Um, but Zergling has been a competitive player for some time. He was on an HGC team. They didn't end up getting the opportunity to play in HGC, but they did win Crucible. Uh, he was on Scythe Esports. Great player, solid team, and um, and then he got picked up by Wildheart, and he has been absolutely dominating um, ever since he's been on Wildheart. So it's, it's always fun to see some of these players come back. I think I kind of wished more... Um, non HEC players entered. I mean, look at how much damage that was between the Spear, uh, Wrath, and the Ws. And that's another thing to point out. W, with everything that you're doing, is already increasing its damage. But you pop Wrath, and that's an extra 40% damage on all of that as well. So the amount of damage you can do is pretty crazy. And I won't actually show it in try mode after this game. Um, I will probably have to log back in, but uh, you, you can actually 100 to 0 most backliners in this build. Although it's not as effective as the other builds, it still is very, very powerful. So he has a full turn in. So in the last turn in, he turned in about 30 of the, the 50. And in this turn in, he's turned in 55 of the 55. So, so far, he's kept his team in the macro. But just watch how he he's just bullying everyone. I mean, it kind of forces Dayquaza on that D.Va to, to react to him. It was a little weird. The health bar wasn't moving. And once again, he pops Wrath the Berserker. He's taking a bit of damage here. Uh, now, he does have double healers, so it's okay to take a little bit of damage, but at this high level of competitive, you always need to be concerned that the enemies are going to throw something at you. Now, the cool part about being Sonya with Wrath is CC um, is at 50% duration on you. So it's not that big of a deal if you get hit by, let's say, a Deckard root, but it is still pretty annoying if you get pulled in by Valkyrie or if you get pulled in by Lornado. So the enemies are still about a half a level ahead, um, and he he wants to play a little aggressive, but he it's pretty limited in what they want to do, because if they overcommit, then they have a long way to get back to their base. So they really don't want to overcommit in this situation. Um, and you can see, again, late game, even though you can be a juggernaut, you can also still play this build pretty safe. Walk up, do a W, walk away. You generally will gain back the health that you lost by walking up. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's just poking. He is a front line for his team. And that's basically it. Um, he is there to, to make sure that the enemies cannot get to his back line. And his back line is two healers that can make sure that he can always stay in the front line. And he has no mana bar, which means he can last as long as his healers have mana. And one of his healers is Brightwing, who could always just back and then Z back into the team. And his other one, Stukov, who already is relatively mana efficient, especially if you're playing him correctly. So overall, I mean, it's a unique uh, team comp. So the enemies have level 20s. They don't really want to be fighting right now, um, unless they catch people really out of position. They just kind of want to hold off, get 20s, and then look for a fight post-20 and potentially end through middle. They need to be worried because if they die here, the enemies can go and take bottom at any point. Um, but they do need to always keep in their mind, though, they can just win through middle at any point. So the enemy team is going to go for the boss. They're going to take this uh, mid-keep, and then they're going to back because they need to be able to deal with this boss, and they need to be grouped up when they do it. So you can see many of them go into this area um, within the Fog of War, just in case the enemies show up. A couple of the enemies back to go deal with the camp that they sent mid, and now they're going to send uh, five people top to just deal with this. Um, one of the things that's really good about Sonya, when the enemies get things like the Web Weaver or the boss, you can see he's hitting the, the boss for a good 600 damage each attack. Um, and look at how aggressive he can play in here. He's getting stunned and his stuns are almost instantly ending. And he's gaining most of his life back very quickly. 
Um, and again, he's hitting this Joanna for 600 damage with his W. Um, and that's without adding in the percent health yet. That's just from the W. And, and I mean, and that's not even the fourth W where you get the crit. Like 540 damage there, 917 damage there, plus the 77% health damage that's being thrown in there that he's getting healed back for. And you can see, he's staying relatively high health. Now again, he has double healers, so um, it's not all the healing that he has. But it certainly allows him to have a lot of damage. He can play aggressive. Um, and now, they're getting pretty close to a turn-in. They do have two problem areas though if at any point the enemy team can set up an ambush and take him out or take his team out uh they can end through top or bottom lane so they are going to be very careful when checking bushes when they don't know where the enemies are now currently they know that the enemies are in mid lane because i just saw three of them there now zarya is there they may be looking to invade now that Zarya has been showing for a bit, but no one else has been showing, and there's really not much else on the map, so you're going to see Diablo will probably check bushes with W, or that Chromie will be checking bushes with Time Walker's Pursuit. And that's basically how they're going to be playing this out. They're just going to play as safe as possible and try to stick together. He doesn't really have an escape. Now, if you're playing Sonya, your best escape without leap is to Whirlwind. Um, to try to queue onto a minion that's further away and to use Whirlwind. The Whirlwind just activating it is going to um, trigger your your uh, Fury. Well, sorry, your No Escape anyways, but the second portion of Fury anyways, which gives you the 10% movement speed. If you have No Escape, 20% movement speed, and you can go through minions with Whirlwind and through, through things, so you can't be body blocked. So that's basically the best thing that you can do if you're being chased in this build is try to save your E for your escape um, and just use your your W to clear lanes and tr do your best to heal yourself with other means like this. He's gained most of his life back with just Ws in this case. <clears throat> so now this next fight is going to be a little awkward. Uh, it seems like his team's a bit split. And he wants to go in, but at the same time, at this high level of play, you've got to be very careful because at any point, everyone on the enemy team can target one person and drop you. So, uh, he ends up getting jumped on um, by the Joanna. He gets healed by the Brightwing, and he's just going in, healing a good portion of his health, but he has that 75% less healing, so he backs up, waits for a bit of healing, mounts back up, and he goes right back in once again. He uses W on the minion wave, so that he can safely hit the enemies with the W's without needing to get all the way back there. Gaining a good portion of his health back. And in this case, they've taken out one person and they will be able to get a turn in for free. Once again, he's turning in a huge portion of it. I I'd imagine this game he probably turned in 60 to 70% of the gems. And um, has set him his team up quite a bit for this game. And this right here is the last push. So overall, did you guys see anything really technical out of this game? Did you see any insane plays? Any Anything crazy coming out from Zergling? Not really. And that's not really anything against Zergling. It's more that he knows what fights to take and what fights not to, and when to take um, chances. And he's played this game more calculated than technical. And what that means is you don't need to play like a pro to be able to replicate this but you do need to learn how to play calculated and if you can play calculated you can pretty much dominate because it is a bit of an unstoppable juggernaut um it took multiple building shots from the core and the keep to be able to take him out as well as two to three people all focusing on him at once and he's able to just take out whatever he wants to and that is w build sonya specifically from zergling if you guys like this type of video, let me know. I'll continue making them. Uh, the Why the Pros Play series will uh, probably move on to Masters Clash when uh, CCL is done. So don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Masters Clash is doing their own kind of um, scene for that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos.